Our time at our rental home with the makeshift shop has come to an end. Taking over. Now we're off to our friend's house to turn her garage and driveway into a shop. Thankfully, the majority of the work can be done inside something, whether it's the Ambo or the garage, because that Florida summer weather is upon us. Tiff requested an undermounted sink, and of course I accepted the challenge, so that means that this cut is going to be visible and needs to be clean. So I did a small practice cut with the router, and I'm making a jig to help out with the cut. afternoon and this is the third brace that I had to do. Uh, I guess that's why they say measure two, three, four, five, ten, twenty thousand times, cut once, and that's exactly what happened. I couldn't figure out why my measuring my measurements kept being off for about a half an inch or something. I just I wasn't calculating something right. So eventually what I did was I drilled a hole right on the edge of the cutting line and I stuck my router bit down in there so that I can get the precise measurement that I needed to be away from, uh, that the guide needed to be away from the hole. So I got that, redid the guide, uh, you know, third time's a charm, but it is finally that time, people. You know, as they say, measuring is temporary, but the cut is forever, so. <laughs> So this brace, as you can see, is on here very tight. There ain't much room for movement, but I had an awful skip when I first started the tool that messed up my line from here. I don't really know what happened except for maybe my bit was making contact with that hole somewhere that I drilled, and that caused it to kind of have a, like a mini, uh, I don't know, kickback or what, I don't know, but kind of jacked me up right here, so. Guess I'm gonna undo the brace, move this guideline back ever so slightly and just try to smooth this out at the cost of uh, 
I guess this not being a perfect square and also these two boards here when the guy comes down off of here it also created another little skip but it's so small that I could probably I could just you know fix this with some um, hand sanding um, but other than that it looks mostly okay I feel better about it once I fix this piece right here Figure now is a good time to say that as you're already aware I am not a professional this is my second time ever doing this other than my practice piece laying around here somewhere so take my advice at your own risk just a DIY guy on the tube Alright, it looks a little bit better, but I am going to clean up that mess down there. So that I can turn the fan back on because it's getting toasty in there. But it'll be clean in three, two, one, zero. Alright, uh Yeah, so hit it with the sander a little bit more. It's unfortunately not perfect, but definitely live with it. So I'm gonna go throw it in the ammo right now and just see how it looks. Well, I'm not in love with it, but I'm thinking I'll learn to live with it after cleaning it up a teeny bit more. With us changing locations, we realized that we ended up spending less hours working on the Ambo due to mostly positive distractions, like training the boys to be adventure cats, celebrating at good boy birthday parties, doing yard work, hiring other people to do work on the AMBO. Hiring other people to do yard work. Going boat shopping with family in Maryland, and the list goes on. Eventually, so does the Ambo building show. So once upon a time, we lived on the boat and documented our life for strangers on the internet to see. Um, that was like early 2021. We had a sailing YouTube couple that were spamming the comments of a lot of our videos to promote their own video. Um, it's, a, it's a couple who we had never really interacted with before. But anyways, one of the video comments, one of the videos that they left said, we made our own lithium batteries DIY or something to that nature. 
which obviously I didn't I didn't click on it but it did have me thinking what, what did they mean when they said they made their own lithium batteries how do you make a lithium battery bank at home well my curiosity got the best of me I searched and the internet did not let me down and here we are I don't know we'll just say six months later or I am actually making my own lithium battery bank. So pretty much what that means is that the blue cells that you just seen, they're each, you know, about three volts, and I'm gonna connect four of them to equal a 12 volt uh, battery, if you will. And then there's a separate battery management system that um, kind of controls a lot of the battery safety parameters and what have you. And the rest of the things sitting around of what I'm going to make the batteries out of, I have just these threaded rods. These were, and this, these are pretty much just some scrap from the ambulance, but I'm using them for their 90 degree angle. This is some um, scrap starboard that was in the ambulance. They built the ambulance out of starboard. How cool is that? So we've just got hundreds of dollars worth of scrap that um, we can use for whatever we'd like. I have one battery assembled already minus the wiring just to give you an idea of what that'll look like. threaded rods that's to really help uh, compress them together especially on the initial charge because they want to swell on these cases so the starboard and the um, threaded rods help prevent them from swelling these guys kind of double up as handles as well as provide a little bit of extra strength overall weighs about 55 pounds but it's a heck of a lot of power per pound, you know, when you look at the fact that it is a 280 amp hour, 12 volt lithium ion battery, which means that you can charge them at a much quicker rate, which means that they, uh, they accept a higher voltage and you can charge them quicker and you can also drain them down much lower than you can uh, a flooded or AGM battery, so pretty sweet deal overall it just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of know-how i.e. internet searching on your behalf find somebody else who knows how to tell you and hopefully everything goes according to plan which that remains to be seen so I guess I'll get back to it Think that's enough to fit through? Not even rabbit. Cat door complete.
After removing the vinyl decal and remaining adhesive, we weren't surprised to find that there still lives a ghost decal, as we call it. Basically a nice shiny paint that hid under the vinyl decal for 10 years and wasn't exposed to the elements. Yeah, that takes a lot of buffing in order to correct. We started with the cutting compound and moved to a polish, doing a number of passes with both. Then we finished with the spray ceramic coating. We're totally amateurs, but we've had a lot of practice between this and the boat. And we get a lot of compliments, so maybe we're doing something right. As you can see, it's finally starting to look like a home inside of the rig, especially with the ceiling panels going in. Here's a non-pro tip. Adjustable bolt poles make great temporary holders for mounting ceiling panels. Back when we first started making YouTube videos, we would use mainstream music for our videos and I always enjoyed reading people's comments complaining about our awful music choice. After a few years, YouTube decided we were worthy of earning some pennies here and there for our efforts, but we've got to move to royalty free music or else they're going to give our pennies to the mainstream musicians. For the bulk of this build, we've had music playing and I wish we could just upload the footage as is. It would save so much time instead of having to remove the audio and go hunting for some cheap tune to place over it. What'd you say, Tim? Oh, shit. Those are the rules if you want to make a buck doing this. So thanks for your support and understanding.
So I've been, I don't know when I first started working on this, it's, I was on and off, but I've been on it pretty heavy for the last couple weeks, I guess, assembling the batteries and tidying these wires up as best as I could. But we finally have come to the day where it's time to start testing certain systems. We have the solar panels covered up. Should you have the mic for this? It's all right. It has four microphones on it in case I don't have the mic. And okay. I, and would it being right on me? Why is she always interrupting? Dang so, on. You can um, what just, was I talking about? The solar panels are covered up. You just start back there again. So we've got the solar panels covered up to uh, install them this evening. I tested and there was about 70 volt, um, 70, 70 of them bitches. <laughs> well, damn, we got 70 solar panels. <laughs> there was about, there was about 70 volts coming through the solar panels and um, I thought that was weird with them being completely covered up. So I'm just gonna wait until there is no sun, no motorcycles. <laughs> And then I will um, connect them so that we can, you know, test to ensure that the solars are charging the batteries tomorrow. But this evening we're pretty much just going to test the AC system and the DC. And um, yeah, hopefully things uh, go according to plan. I guess first things first is turning the battery switch on. I'm nervous. So the AC side is still off. So I'm gonna go inside and um, make sure I can see. Off, off. Yeah. I'm gonna go inside and uh, test some DC appliances. Let's see what happens. Oh, there's power. Let's see. Ooh. There's power. That is, uh, those are our batteries. First time ever, uh, turning these on under its own power. What else can we test? The you can't see. <laughs> All right. We're about to, uh, I guess I'm about to turn on the main AC breaker and then I'll turn on this outlet. And if this guy starts flashing, then that means we have AC power. But if they're sparking and I start screaming and that means that we have a, a problem. Okay. All right, which one is the, that's the rear kitchen. The rear kit is gonna be the second one. I just, all right. These noises. So far, nothing. Maybe it's inverters take a while. Let me turn this um, off. It's GFI too, right? Maybe yeah, we need so to it could be. Okay. Yeah, but you know, inverters they do take a they do take a little while. Uh, yeah. All right. We'll give it some time. I'm gonna go out, see what see what type of little messages. Flip this guy on now. Just leave it on. 
go out and take a look at the inverter. There's a whole lot of nothing going on up in here. Yeah, a whole lot of nothing. I'm wondering if that's because I haven't done any of the, the configuring yet. I also don't have the um, our monitor screen hooked up yet. Or any of the, uh, the Bluetooth monitoring McJiggers, so. I don't know, but. A whole lot of nothing coming in off of the inverter side. Um, inverter, wake up. And I suppose that that might be okay. That just probably tells me that I guess I do need to figure, finish the, the configuration of everything. I know Victron's pretty high tech when it comes to that it's not just probably not just flip on like our magnum inverter was but there's no doubt that we had power going to the DC side of things and the AC side is obviously wired into that same bus if we had um, a shore power connection here we could possibly maybe test that way but we don't so we're strictly can only test off of the batteries which is fine because that's how we're going to be rocking for the most part. But I guess we will check back once we know more about um, what's going on with the AC sitch. So there's a slight chance that I might be a pretty big idiot. We're about to figure out shortly. I put the cover on the inverter and there's a switch right there on the inverter. That thing just looked like a black rectangle of a bunch of midst of electronic parts. But there's a switch right there on the daggone inverter. So I'm about to turn on the, uh, the battery switch for DC power. Now I'm going to switch the inverter on. I heard a tick in there. There's a tick. We got a light. The light says inverter on. Let's go inside and see what happens next. Turn some lights on or something in here so we feel like we got some power. What do we got? The kitchen counter. There we go. Got our lights on. Let's come in here. Let's turn this main breaker on. Oh. Sounds like we just blew this sucker. Reset. So she felt the power and we instantly blew it. Whoa, ho, ho. Did you do do the? Well, somebody come look at this. Well, somebody come look at this. I think I know just the person. I'm gonna have Tiff come look at this because she has no idea. I'm about to tell her how much of an idiot I am and she's gonna be happy. So I have that light in power through that extension cord 
right there we obviously have this charger going here and my phone charging so I'm gonna leave you guys right here I'm gonna ask Tiff to come in here and help me with something and hopefully she can figure out exactly what's going on and then we will explain to her what happened so let's see how it goes turned it on yet but I could <coughs> look wait what? how'd you do that do that how'd you do it <laughs> it's charging <laughs> it's charging how'd you do it <laughs> hey look at that folks mm. <laughs> you fixed the inverter uh I fixed it myself the inverter was there to work all along. You want to turn so, on? The lights. You want me to show you? Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you want to see? It'll all, it'll all make sense when you go back out there. Okay. We just needed a night to uh, decompress and really figure out what was going on. It was the breaker I told you about. Yep. It wasn't. <laughs> After me. Mm-hmm. requires the cover. It didn't require oh, the cover, but with the cover on. <laughs> yes. Who knew? You had to turn it on. Who knew that there'd be a switch right there in our face and we had no idea. All right. All right. That one was easy. Yeah. Okay. It's beautiful. So, I guess that means that we have full power. Well, <laughs> well, that's not that's not hooked up yet. But just know that it's uh, yeah. I guess that's the next big thing is to figure out how much exact how much solar we're bringing in because I could figure you know do the math roughly, but mm -hmm. I want to see some actual figures. I'm glad to know that um, the batteries. Glad to know that everything's working. Yeah, that's a big step. Yeah. And you don't have to break open the manual. I'm sure it would help to read the manual. <laughs> but at least to get it on. Yeah. I guess step one would have been make sure it's turned on. <laughs> yeah. Which would have helped. Yay. How about that? Let's go camping. <laughs> <laughs> Terms for your birthday. We yeah. go camping for Terms' birthday. I don't know about that. I don't know about that one. Hey, good job, babe. You're so smart. Yeah, I'm so smart. I've turned the switch on. That's all we needed all this time. Yeah, but it required all this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know why any of this does. <laughs> This video covers five months worth of work. We cut these holes into the ceiling panels months ago when we planned to use a recessed style light. But we ditched those and found a different style that thankfully just barely cover up the huge holes we cut. Otherwise we would have needed to purchase more material and redo the ceiling.
Everybody, yes. Can you hand me the test pee? <laughs> You're very well hydrated. Test the urine. <laughs> All right, so, so it goes down these two holes, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. so I'm going to go down those two holes. And they go to the same place, yeah? Yes. Okay. So you can just, you know, fire in the hole whenever you're ready. <laughs> okay. And, um, we will see how it goes. I'll let you know when I'm set. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, fire in the hole. Z. Anything? <laughs> uh oh. I was a little concerned it wasn't slanted enough. Like right here, back in here, gets, it's gonna it's, roll it's, back. It's lower than it is here. Yeah, I know. That's why I tried my best to get it as low as possible. No leakage. Let's see what's going on over here. Do you hear it? Like I heard. I heard. I didn't pour a whole lot, just like a quarter bottle. I can't say that I actually... I don't think I see any water in here. Pour, pour a little bit more, let's see what happens. It's probably, there's probably always going to be some built up. Yeah. Alright, that was the whole thing. <laughs> that was the whole bottle. Alright, that's that's probably um, accurate amount of the urine. Oh. Okay, there's a little bit in here. It's kind of concentrated down there. Yeah, I guess we're on a slant too. Yeah, that's true. The slant isn't doing us any favors. So, it's definitely all trapped up in the hose. Yeah. Whoops. Dang it. We easily fix this by removing the bottom hose clamp and shoving the plumbing down further to remove the slant in the hose. After what feels like years, it's finally time to start moving things in. This build is ready for the road, and all that's left is dropping it off to get the truck serviced. 